Mom visits her son in school lunchroom. Then she saw what teachers had done and was outraged. This story narrates the sad event that changed the life of a mother and her youngest child, only six years old, forever. This story is proof that the feeling of love and solidarity of an entire community will always be stronger than any kind of social stigma whose sole purpose is to foster hatred. Nicole is a proud mother of five children. They are a humble family, but that has never stopped them from being happy nor from fighting for what they want. Nicole's husband Mark is a truck driver, which forces him to spend a lot of time away from home in order to earn money to support his family. Nicole has not been able to go back to work since she became pregnant with her first child. She never went to college because her family could not afford it, and her academic record was not good enough to qualify for any scholarships. But that never made her feel inferior to the rest. For her, her greatest success is her family. Being a mother changed her life, and that is her most important <laughs> full-time job taking care of her five children, giving them love, and a decent education is her top priority. It doesn't matter that we can't live in a big house, that we can't go on vacation or buy new clothes every year. All of that is superficial and doesn't define us. It's our actions and our accomplishments in life that make us who we really are and what will give us value. Never forget that, my children, was what she always told them when they were going through a bad time or one of her children was sad about something they didn't achieve. Hunter is the youngest of her children, only six years old. He's followed by twins Bruce and Jack, seven years old, Margaret, nine years old, and Anthony, ten years old. All of them are good children and study in order to have opportunities for the future and help the whole family. All the children went to district public school in Grants Pass. Nicole drove her children to school every day and picked them up, except for the weeks when her husband did not have to work and she could rest and stay at home doing other chores. Everything seemed to be going well, their day-to-day -day life was no different than any other poor family in Oregon, but life had a new setback in store for them that would change their lives and the lives of those who knew them completely. One morning on their way to school, their car broke down. They still had five kilometers to go when suddenly there was a lot of smoke coming out of the hood of the car. The children were frightened by the smoke and Nicole was forced to pull over to the side of the road to check where the problem was coming from. What happened, Mom? Is it serious? asked one of the twins, staring in fright at the smoke coming out. It's probably nothing. This car is very old, needs a lot of repairs, but I don't think it's serious this time. Let's go to the mechanic. He's five minutes from here, and if we're lucky, he'll fix them quickly for us to go to school. You know that in that school, they don't allow the students to be late. They're very strict, the eldest of her sons told her with a very worried gesture. I know, son, but I can't control when the car is going to break down. That school of yours has to understand these kind of things. You're not late because you are having a party. It is an emergency. If you have problems, tell me. I'll explain it to myself to whoever I have to. Nicole was able to get to the nearest mechanic and was told that the car would be ready in an hour. The breakdown wasn't serious, but a part needed to be replaced and she couldn't do it any faster. In an hour, we'll be at school, she told her five children to calm them down. But the serious gesture with which they looked at her did not reassure her at all. After leaving the mechanic and paying the bill, which was more expensive than Nicole had expected, she left the children at the school gate and said goodbye to them from the car. The children rushed out of the car to get inside the school as soon as possible, all but one of them. The youngest of them all, Hunter, had not wanted to get out of the car and was still wearing his seatbelt. Hunter, honey, you have to go to school. Come on, you only missed one class. It's okay. But the boy was still looking very serious and seemed to be hiding something else. We mustn't be late. It's the rules, Mom. It's better if I don't come in. I'll make up that I'm sick, he said, looking at her straight in the eyes. The boy looked really scared. All your brothers are inside, Hunter. Please, go inside. If anything happens, I'll be here to help you. Trust me, my son. Mommy will never leave you alone. But now you have to go inside, please. Hunter finally relented and got out of the car, crestfallen. He walked slowly through the front door of the school, although before entering, he looked back to wave goodbye to his mother one last time. Nicole was very uneasy about her children's attitude about having to be late for class, but especially about Hunter's. Her son was a very cheerful and happy boy. She had never seen him so scared about anything. She knew the school was strict, but she didn't know how well they enforced their rules. She decided to wait until lunchtime to check that everything was going well. She especially wanted to visit Hunter and see how he was doing. 
Nicole considered herself a very protective mother, and she knew that this could sometimes be counterproductive for her children and that she should give them more space. But a mother knows when to step in and protect her children, no matter what boundaries she oversteps. She took a couple of laps with the car to make time, bought things for home at a supermarket near the school, and had an iced coffee. In the rush, she had barely had breakfast and needed caffeine to get her going. Two hours later, Nicole couldn't wait any longer and walked into the school. She had to say she was coming to hand in homework to one of her children, otherwise they wouldn't have let her in. The school prohibits courtesy visits. The children lose their concentration if they see their parents. They must be focused to study, the secretary told her in a cold and cutting way when she tried to go to the lunchroom to see Hunter. Miss, my son needs to see me and I have some homework he forgot at home. I won't be a moment. I don't think saying hello to his mother will deprive him of anything. My son is very smart. He knows what he needs to do to stay focused in class. That rule is absurd, Nicole replied sharply as she stormed into the dining room where the children were having lunch. When Nicole entered the dining room, the first thing she saw was Hunter sitting alone. But that wasn't the worst of it. The six-year-old had a partition placed right in front of his face to prevent him from seeing or communicating with anyone else. In front of him was a cup with a D for detention on it while Hunter himself sat crying. Nicole was outraged at the school's treatment of her son, as any mother would be. Knowing she had to do something, Nicole took a picture of Hunter right there in the school lunchroom. She then uploaded it to social media where it quickly sparked a firestorm in the local community. After that, she rushed over to her son quickly to comfort him and asked him what had happened. Hunter, my love, don't cry anymore. That's it, it's over. Mommy is already here with you. Shh, she told him while hugging and kissing him to comfort him and make him stop crying. The boy could not stop crying. He hugged his mother tightly and sank his face into his mother's chest. Nicole was about to burst with the rage she felt at that moment, but she knew it would only make her son suffer more. He was too little for what had just happened to him, and watching his mother lose control would do him no favors. The secretary had notified the school principal and some other teachers. She had told them that a woman had forced her way into the dining room and that they should get her out of there as soon as possible. However, when they arrived at the dining room and found the image of Hunter hugging his mother crying, they did not know how to react. Ma'am, we're going to have to ask you to leave. No visitors are allowed, the headmistress told her with a cold and distant tone. Nicole didn't even look at her to give her an answer. You have gotten yourselves into serious trouble and not just with me. What you have done to my son will have consequences. I can assure you of that, she replied coldly as she took Hunter in her arms. Neither the principal nor the secretary nor any teacher dared to say anything to contradict Nicole's words or to prevent her from taking her son. Deep down, they all felt a great sense of guilt for what was happening there and for the behavioral measures that the school applied to its students. A few days later, Nicole's photo went viral on social media. The image of little Hunter crying isolated in the school cafeteria with a pillar in front of him made the networks explode and all the neighbors wanted to help Nicole to put an end to this terrifying situation. All the parents who had children enrolled in Grants Pass gathered to make a big demonstration in protest against their anti-human punishment measures. The surprise was when not only the parents of the students gathered at the school gates, but also all those who had received the photograph and were outraged to see little Hunter punished and crying. People from all over Oregon had gone there to help them and stop this cruelty. Even the teachers at the school had decided to stand up to the management to get justice. The Grants Pass School was the only public school in the district, which is why it was so important for parents and children to make sure that education there was being provided properly and according to an ethical and human rights code of conduct, and not as if it were a children's military school. But aside from all that, the biggest surprise Nicole and her family received in the weeks following the event came from their neighbors. They knew they didn't have much money and that she had to drive him to school every day. So they decided to take up a collection and give them a new car so they would never be late again. I can't believe it. This car is for us, said Nicole when she came out onto the street and saw her neighbors waiting for her around a beautiful red Chrysler station wagon. Kids, come see the new car. It's awesome. It wasn't a new car, certainly, but it was very well cared for and didn't need any repairs, unlike her old car, which practically every week was breaking down and getting harder and harder to fix. Nicole and her husband couldn't have been happier with what their community had just given them. They would be forever in their debt. You don't owe us anything. You helped us by finding out what was going on at the school. Nicole, you fought for our children and their rights. This car is just one more token of appreciation for that, a very excited neighbor told her. 
After several months of internal investigations, the school was taken to an inspection in which the principal and vice principal were dismissed and banned from their posts forever. No one else would ever again suffer the torment that Hunter and the rest of the children had to endure in those years, and all thanks to Nicole's courage and the massive support of the community. The solidarity and unconditional support of the neighborhood community was a great act of charity that will help Nicole and her family immensely. The people of Grants Pass proved that where there is love, there's always hope. Did you like this touching and surprising story? If so, we invite you to leave us a comment expressing your opinion and what this story has made you feel. If you want to continue enjoying inspiring stories like this one, subscribe to our channel and check out the other videos shown at the bottom of the screen. Thank you for your cooperation.